What's up everyone? Welcome to All That Testing Shit. Today I'm trying out the Kemper Profiler Player Pedal. It's been a long time since I've been excited for a Kemper product. And when they announced the Profiler Player, I was extremely happy. I was one of those early adopters who completely loved the original Kemper profiling app and what it could do at the time. It was just mind-blowing of what it could do. But then I just ventured into, you know, the fractal route, which had more options, since you basically had free reigns with how you would make your signal path or create your signal path. Line 6, you know, with the pod and the helix, uh, released more modelers like the HX Stomp, which sort of has a similar size to the Kemper Profile Player. You know, the Quad Cortex was released, Tonex, etc. And even though Kemper pushed out new products or different products, the technology behind it all have stayed the same uh, for the past 10 years. Other modelers have, in my opinion, sounded better than the Kemper today. But I also know a lot of people who absolutely swears by them. So that's just one of those things that's really down to, you know, personal preference. Now, with the Profiler Player, I think they have hit the nail on the freaking head. It's small, it's compact, and it basically does everything that the bigger Kemper units do. You know, except for a lack of some inputs and outputs. That will probably just have forced Kemper to make a little bigger of a unit, and, you know, sacrificing processing and, you know, and power. They made this incredibly bare bones looking pedal with the button layout like this, and this is fairly uh, the same as on the bigger unit. No? Don't you agree? The actual tweaking takes place on your computer or on your phone using, you know, Bluetooth and mumbo jumbo stuff. <laughs> and the price is $700 or euros, which I think is a great and competitive price today for what you get in this little asshole of a unit. It's powered with a 9 volt, 2.5 ampere uh, power adapter. Uh, there's no brick or anything, which is nice. Uh, it comes with a manual and that's it. I have the profiler play connected to my Mac and I'm using the rig manager on the Mac to control all the presets and what the buttons do. You have five switchable presets right here, but you can also, you know, change banks. In terms of how many you can store on this thing, it seems like on the rig manager that there's 10 banks with five presets or rigs in every bank. So 50 profiles or 50 rigs, I would say. These three buttons right here, you can decide how they're going to function. So you can have them as, you know, switching banks, uh, switching presets. Uh, really up to you. You have a master volume, you have a rig volume. Uh, here's like a connectivity Wi-Fi Bluetooth thingy. The cone right here, I think it's if you have the Kemper cone, which is the, you know, the, the cabinet uh, or the, the speaker that Kemper has. Uh, you can... I don't know what it's doing, but it doesn't light up when I push it. So uh, who knows what it's doing. Okay, when I hold it, it started. <laughs> Ah, okay, so I hear it now. If I engage it, it turns off the cabinet section of the rig. So if you would go out to a Kemper cab or a Kemper cone, you know, it would just disengage the cabinet in the profile. Okay, you have a FX1, FX2, and I think these are just quick knobs for uh, the effects, basically, right there. But the majority of the editing will be done in the rig manager on your computer or on your phone. And first thing I noticed is that uh, my name is featured on here in the rig packs with some really freaking old uh, presets that... Sounds like uh, horse shit, unfortunately. <laughs> Bug area. And these are old profiles that I made back in the day using the bigger unit. However, I did make a new preset and I managed to add one of my impulse responses and made a completely new rig that I think sounds a little bit better. Yeah, man, that sounds good. Very thrashy sounding. I'm not necessarily sure if this unit sports the same processing power as the bigger units because I uh, I think that you're not able to use as many spots for effects. I might be wrong with this, but I don't. I think we're a little bit more limited to uh, what you can use. I think in this single chain, I'm using a green scream. 
uh, a, a boost or a pre-boost to my amplifier. So if I shut it off. Turn it back on. Yeah, man. Cabinet is uh, all aboard the truck train. That's uh, that's a preset I made. And then I have a graphic equalizer. I don't remember what I did. Oh, I dipped some of the, the lows in there, 160 hertz. I don't think I've ever butchered that song as much as I did right there. Anyway, it's just to demonstrate the tones, okay? And also before making this video, I reached out to my good friend Jens Bulgren, who's running Bulgren Digital, and I asked if he could support me a free package or something like that to download so I could get going with my, uh, you know, profiles. I, I don't have any, like, newer profiles or anything on it because I haven't really used a Kemper in a long time. He was like, hola, no sweat, here you go. He sent me the two and Madsen pack, so I brought in a couple of those in here. <laughs> Very exodus on this one, man. Meshuba, which I guess is Meshuga. I mean, it can't really be anything else, could it? But I'm quite happy with my Welcome to 2024 rig that I made. Okay, let me add some effects to this. So right now there's uh, an empty spot. Could we have some delay maybe? Legacy delay, two tap delay, single delay. Uh, I'm I feeling single today. Okay, turn down the volume a little bit. Very nice. Let me see if I can find some other cool rigs from one of these artists. Keith Marrow, holy shit, let's go. Andromeda. See, this, I doubt that this is exactly how the rig initially sounded like. They, they've, they've done something with the rigs or the units themselves. I mean, there's just no bass in this preset right here. This sounds good. Okay, noob clean. I like that. So here you can see it says legacy reverb. So apparently there is some newer reverb that... It's still there though, so it still works. But it's just a marking that this is an old uh, reverb that I used when I made this. Okay, let me see if I can just add some chorus and shit. I, I just wanted to see if if I can, uh, you know, if I can strain the unit a little bit by adding a lot of stuff. Okay. Okay, very cool. Is there another one? Vintage chorus. Okay. One more delay. Reverse mix. Okay, cool, cool, cool. 
I can't seem to add anything more here. I mean, there's a lot of space in the single path, but it's not like I can add anything. I guess you're kind of stuck with these amount of blocks that you can use. So in that sense, the Kemper is a little bit more limited than, for say, like a Quad Cortex or a Helix or you know, fractal stuff. At the same time, I don't feel like I'm using very complicated rigs. Okay, do I have any type of lead? <laughs> Yeah, I definitely think something happened with the older rigs that are on here because I, I don't remember them sounding like this or even having this little gain, to be honest. If you have old rigs, you probably need to tweak them a little bit to work with the newer uh, Kemper modeler, I would say. <laughs> I have to see, I have no idea how I upload my sound to the, the cloud now, if I can do that. Because it seems like these are, you know, the rig packs are just old packs. And uh, I'm not sure how I upload my, my new rig into here, so you guys can use it. I think that, you know, the profile player is not meant to be the same as the bigger unit. I think it's meant to be the pedal that you incorporate in your rig together with the rest of your stuff. It's like the tonics a little bit, but you have a little bit more in terms of effects and in routing. And even though the editing is destructive on Kemper units, meaning that you profile an amplifier in a certain instance and everything else you do with the gain, bass, metal and treble and so on is destructive editing. Usually something I'm not a fan of, uh, because it makes a profile sound worse. But in this case, it's sounding really great right now. Like I said before, I think they really put the nail on the head with this one in terms of size, price, and looks. And I haven't even mentioned that this is also an audio interface. With the limited inputs and outputs, I still get exactly what I would need for a live show. You have, you know, the expression pedal input, you have a stereo output, you have a headphone output that, you know, I would probably use it into like an in-ear rig or something like that, or my in-ear system. That would have been nice to see a MIDI input on this though. Uh, to control like an Evertide H9 at the side or something like that, to have complete control over this unit and the effects you're using it with. But at the same time, the effects on here for, you know, 90% of the guitar player out there, I think the effects on this unit is probably enough. So there you go. That's my little demo of the Kemper Profiler player right there. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, maybe like, subscribe, maybe get something from oldanglandshop.com, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.